Hi guys, welcome to A Cumbrian Lad Outdoors and welcome to today's video. We are parked up in the village of Patterdale. Adam in the Wild is with me today and we've had a pint in the White Lion. And we are just a very short walk up from there, less than five minutes and it already feels like we're in the middle of nowhere. And Arneson Crag is our destination for the evening. Quite a short walk, it's about a mile but it's very steep very steep indeed. We've got some overcast weather at the moment but the sun is supposed to get out before the high winds and heavy rain come in at 11 o'clock tonight. We are forecast at ground level 35 to 40 mile an hour and the rain is just touching the red on the Met Office so it's going to be some heavy rain overnight. You can see there the little path that we've been following. Here's the main pussycat himself Mr Adam in the wild. Yes sir! Never change, mate, never change. Never. And right up there somewhere is Arnis and Crag, our destination for tonight's wild camp. We do already have some views. Angletarn Pikes just up there. Beautiful mountains. We can't quite see Ull's water yet. And just through these trees we can clearly see Sheffield Pike and Glenridin Dodd, which I have done camps on, so if you scroll down my videos, you'll be able to see those. So for now, Adam and myself, we're just gonna follow this path. And as always, I shall bring you back along the way to show you the beautiful views of the Lake District as they open up. So come on, let's go. And just a very, very short walk, four to five minutes on from where I spoke to you last, and we've got our first view from a height of Ullswater, nice clear path so far. Again the burnt copper orange colours of autumn are starting to make an appearance and there we go, the view at the very bottom of Ullswater. Everything's still really green apart from the burnt copper oranges of the bracken because we have had lots of rain, <laughs> lots of it. Myself and Adam are taking it a little bit easy on this one. I still can't shake the tail end of this cold flu that I've got, I'm a bit chesty still, so a couple of minutes here and we'll be on our way. But I have just noticed with this bad weather coming in, I've actually got the same socks on that I was wearing on day two of the Cumbria Way. If you haven't seen that, again, scroll down a few videos. Uh, day two was the day from hell, we got absolutely soaked and nearly had hypothermia so I don't know whether that's a good, a good sign or not. I'm not superstitious but well you can't count it out can you? Like I say a couple more minutes here and we'll be on our way. <coughs> oh man I'm really struggling with this cold my chest just is getting tight with having asthma as well. It is a steep one but it, normally it wouldn't be too bad but I'll turn the camera around just now and you'll see just how high we've ascended in not even five minutes. That right there is place fell and you can see we're already a good bit above Ull's water. We can now see Glenridin Dodd and Sheffield Pike and just the other side of this wall is the Glamara Valley which I've never even stepped foot in or seen before I don't think unless it's from a from a far fell. There's Adam just checking the map as always he's using OS Maps. OS Maps. Big shout out to OS Maps. Uh, you know where it's at Pussycats and just from this angle where we stood you can see how steep it is. So let's go. Wow, that climb is relentless, man. I think this is about our fourth break. I don't think I've had so many uh, breaks on such a short walk. Man, sweat's dripping off us, but you'll see in a sec just how high we've ascended in a very, very short space of time. There we go. Got a game of football going on down the bottom as well. And the Glamara Valley is now starting to open up. Again you can see how steep we are and we are thinking just somewhere up there is our summit for the evening but it, it's hard to tell on the map it could be anywhere up here but our instincts tell us it's up there. Hooey. <sighs> <laughs> that is steep. It's a steep. It's very steep. So, so and so. So it is. Right onwards. We are just about at the summit of Arneson Crag now. 
Oh, the wind has picked up a little bit and it is quite cool, which is very, very nice. Last little bit of an ascent from where that path is down there was very steep. The views down the Glamara Valley and all around, but none as magnificent as this brother from another, a brother from another mother right here. Oh, Hull's water. Or oh, as Adam says in his video, Lake Susan Boyle, yes I. <laughs> right, let's tap that summit, Ken. Here we go. Arnis and Crag. Done and boshed. And that, my friends, is a yet another one ticked off the list. Just looking from up here, it doesn't look to be a massive amount of spaces and pitches to put the tents up so myself and Adam are going to have a good look about. However, should we need to drop down if we can't find a place, there's spots down there and just on top of this little mound here. So we have scouted some pitches on the way up. So like I say, myself and Adam are going to have a wee look around, see if we can find a pitch up here. If not, we're going to drop down a wee bit. And would you believe it, literally two minutes walk from the summit and myself and Adam have found an absolutely banging, banging little pitch. Summit is just there. And look at this. Easily get two or three tents here. Get another couple here. Few down there. And banging views. Say Place Fell, Ullswater, Glenridding Dodd, Sheffield Pike. and over towards the Glamara Valley. Absolutely beautiful this. Adam's just said, it's yet another one. We've had a few of these this last year that have, that have really taken us by surprise. You know, I don't think we'll see many people up here now. We'll probably get a few waifs and strays wandering past, but yeah, this little spot down here is out of the way and it's also out of the wind which is good. So that offers myself and Adam the chance just to sit out and chit chat, have a good catch up and have a few beers. And hopefully if this wind doesn't get any stronger, we can both hire our drones up as well. So time for chairs to come out and myself and Adam to have a chin wag. As always, I'll bring you back soon. Myself and Adam have been sat out for a good few hours now. We've had one beer each and a good proper catch up. As you can probably tell, the wind that was forecast to come at 11 o'clock is starting to pick up. Um, it's not overly strong, I reckon maybe high teens, mile an hours at the moment. But it is quite cool, my, my hands, I get a bit of Reynards and my, my fingers are starting to go white. So um, we've got the tents up. I'm in the Scarp and Adam is in the Nature Hike Opolis 2. I'm pretty much exactly the same setup as last week with the Sea to Summit Ephelite XT Extreme and the OEX Leviathan EV900. As always, the usual suspects. I've got three beers left. I've got three quarters of a bottle of Coke. Tactical Duck. I think I'm going to have to fight for the pulled pork tonight. If you know, you know. And statutory all day breakfast. Usual electrics and me flex tail gear tiny pump xv2 power bank and head torch from some blesser as i said last week for winter this is a tried and tested very reliable setup for me we'll go and poke our heads in the opolis too i did see this at levu on the farm and this is one of the biggest vestibules i've ever seen in my life i dare say in an emergency you could probably get someone kipping in here adam's also got a sea to summit map but it's not the extreme, it's just the normal ethylite. He's got his Rab sleeping bag, but look at how much room he's in there. He'd definitely get two in there, no problem. And he's got all his bits and bobs in his vestibule. With this wind, consequently, I don't think myself and Adam are gonna be sitting out too late tonight. I think it's gonna get pretty cold pretty quick. So the camera's going down, myself and Adam are gonna sit out on the chairs and have ourselves another beer before it gets too cold i dare say i'll be having tea inside my tent tonight so camera's going down i'll see you when it's tea time well it's just about six o'clock and 
Adam's still sat out, but I've just got in my tent. The wind is starting to pick up considerably, and it is chilly, let me tell you. I've just boiled my water on the jet boil, and I've got the pulled pork from Real Termat rehydrating, ready for something to eat. There's Adam in the wild, just having a wee sit out. He's watching rugby, aren't you, mate? I'm watching the Rugby Union World Cup, England v Chile. And I'll tell you what, it is chilly. <laughs> oh. And, and yeah, looking over that way, you can see the weather front that's coming in. I give it 10 minutes. Max. 10 minutes and then rain. And I'm diving in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah as predicted, um, myself and Adam will not be sitting out late tonight at all. But because we planned the camp well, we've managed a good four hours sat outside catching up, yeah. which is awesome. Um, Adam, as you know, is like a brother from another mother. So I'll put a link to Adam's channel in the description. Please go and check him out. The guy's a legend and I love him with all my heart. So yeah, go and check him out. It's almost food time and I am hungry, let me tell you. Well, as you can hear, the wind is really picking up now. I hope it's not affecting the camera too much, but we are back on the real term at pulled pork, my absolute favorite, and it's ready to go. So let's get it, Scrant. I'm a happy man. I absolutely love these. With the wind comes quite a severe drop in temperature. Adam is still sat out, but he said he's already getting cold. He's gonna go and put his joggers on soon and get in his tent. So that means the bad weather is definitely coming. So it won't be long before bed now. So I'll away and finish my real term at pulled pork and we'll see you before bedtime. Well, that real termite was absolutely delicious. It's warmed me up really nice and it's filled my stomach. Adam's in his tent. And the wind is picking up and I think I can hear a small amount of rain on the tarp, but not much. So that front definitely is coming in. So it's almost bedtime. I'm gonna knock the camera off and get on with some editing and maybe watch a film on Netflix, we'll see. I did manage to get the drone up before the wind uh, got too high, so enjoy the drone footage and the photos that I've managed to get you overnight, and we'll see you in the morning. I dare you to fix me I'm crossing the line again Falling on my knees No stranger to pain Never ending, it's only something I can't forget. My heart won't let it rest, but you keep on forgiving. Admit that I'm afraid. If I let go of this pain, am I completely betrayed? There's no air left to breathe. I'm drowning. Vultures are circling me. Around it, I need to fight. I know. It's just so hard to let it go Shine a light I can see Something I can't forget My heart won't let it rest But you keep on forgiving Admit that I'm afraid if I let go of this rage, am I completely betrayed? Something I can't forget, my heart won't let it rest, but you keep on forgiving. Oh, oh, oh. admit that I'm afraid. 
I let go of this rage? Am I completely betrayed? My heart, my love, my life, the prize. It's hard to fight, to fight, goodbye. Night. and I've had about 10 minutes kip. As you can hear, the wind is a little stronger than forecast. That is a lot more than 40 mile an hour and the wind has come. I'm not sure I'm going to get any more sleep tonight. This is pretty horrific really. My goodness. I would say that's certainly up to towards 60, maybe even more than 60 mile an hour because the tent's getting moved around substantially now. Oh, it's going to be a long night, man. Wow. Right, I'm going to try and get my head down. Well, it's one o'clock in the morning now and uh, Wow, the wind is probably over 70 mile an hour now, and that rain man, that rain is coming down really hard. <coughs> Literally had no more sleep and I genuinely don't think I'm going to get any more. Scarp's holding up well though, it's buffeting around quite a bit. I'm not sure how I'm getting on with his tent because if he's shouting at me I can't hear him. But we love it don't we? <laughs> oh, dear me. It's now 20 to 5 in the morning. I think maybe I've got another 10 minutes maximum so that's a maximum of 20 minutes sleep tonight or last night the rain has subsided but the wind is relentless man I am knackered I just want to get home get a shower and jump into bed man uh. I'm not even going to bother with breakfast I think once the wind dies down enough so I can get hold of Adam, I think it's just going to be a case of pack the, just pack the rucksack, fire everything in the rucksack, jump out, tent down and away. There's going to be no time for filming outside the tent this morning. I've got my rubbish bag with me and I know you all trust me enough that myself and Adam will leave no trace behind. So that's what I'm going to do, as soon as I can get hold of Adam in a lull in the wind, I'm going to get packed up and I will bring you back in the car to sign the video off properly. Oh, right guys, it is now 5 o'clock in the morning, Adam is up and we are both in agreement, it is time to get off this mountain. This wind is not backing up, not one bit and the rain has returned. I'm all packed up inside the tent, I just need to get my boots on. And myself and Adam are going to get out of our tents at the same time and tear them down. I am not looking forward to this one bit. By the time the tents are away, my hands are going to be cold, probably numb. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to this. This is probably my my worst night on a mountain. Um, worse than Randall Knots, where we had to bail because Adam's tent failed. 
yeah, worse. I've had a total, if I'm lucky, 20 minutes kip. So I'm gonna be pulling the tent down, very tired, so I need to concentrate, and then obviously be walking down the mountain in the pitch black as well. So myself and Adam need to concentrate really hard. So yeah, boots on, tent down, back to the car, and we'll see you guys back at the car. Five minutes to get back down to the car once we got about halfway we dropped out of that horrendous wind which was a nice respite but it's rained all the way just as we were packing up Adam's tent has failed it snapped the uh, well it pulled two pegs out the bottom end and it snapped the bottom pole on his tent um, like I say that was no time for filming a, a, a finish to the video up there it was no time to get the anemometer out to see what wind speed but, you know, I'm fairly experienced now. I've been for a few years and I reckon that was easily 60 plus mile an hour wind. That was worse than Ranadal Knots when we had to bail when Adam's uh, nature hike failed. So, um, yeah, it wasn't the best. I am going home, I'm having a shower and I'm going to bed. Oh, dear me. And just chalk it up to experience, eh? <laughs> Right, I'm away home. Thank you very much for clicking on the video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as Adam and I have. So once again, until next time, stay safe. Much love from a Cumbrian lad. <laughs>